Aloha. So just a reminder that when we are clapping for somebody, we just do this. That's, no, that's because I know, I know, but that's, yeah, that's. Yeah, so we just do that here. Just. <laughs> he, he 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 knows. We're the breakthroughs. Keep going. Maybe just music now. Just music. Unlimited rejuvenation, infinite will be shine your light, shine your love on us all. Illumination 
unlimited rejuvenation. Infinite will be shine your light. Shine your love on us all. Here we go. Soul illumination. Unlimited Thank you, Vibhuda. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to New Thought Center Hawaii. Uh, we just had Vibhuda playing the prelude, prelude music. And now uh, we will go into the silent meditation. And our presenter today, Genevieve Brunet, she will be leading the meditation. So just close your eyes for a moment. And it's just a moment to land here and now on the place where you're sitting now. So see if you can feel your feet on the ground. Maybe connect with your sit bones resting on the chair. Your arms resting in your lap or on the chair. And see if you can connect from there with your breath. Just following your breath a few moments, the in and out breath. As it goes, no need to change anything. Following the in and out breath, feel the gong sounds. Yeah, and connecting with this anchor in your body, the breath is the anchor where we can always come back to if we need to reconnect with our body. Thank you, Genevieve. <sighs> that was a lovely, lovely grounding. Good morning and welcome to New Thought Center of Hawaii, to all the people on the Lanai and all the people not here present today who are connecting with us via Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us. 
First, I would like to thank you for your patience with our sudden resumption today of some COVID protocols of the past. We felt that with recent COVID surges, it was the wise thing to do. So the chairs are spaced further apart today and please don't move them. Uh, well, you can choose, you can choose to uh, move over and be like an arm length away. Uh, there have been recent surges in Hawaii and uh, so we are um, trying to be, you know, like conscious of that and um, making the, you know, the small changes we do here on the lanai. You're welcome to wear a mask if you want. Uh, we have extra new ones at the entrance table. So um, my name is Ramona. I'm your facilitator this morning. And uh, our presenter is Genevieve Brune, and our musician is Viboda. So just a reminder about our Kona Center. Uh, our mission is to provide a sanctuary of aloha for the nourishment, development, and evolution of each individual's unique spiritual path. Our history is that um, this religious science church of Hawaii, originally founded in 1971, has now evolved into New Thought Center Hawaii. And thanks to the pandemic of 2020, you know, sort of the, one of the bright sides of, of the pandemic is that we have developed the technical capabilities to hold our services online, which is really helpful to people. Uh, our connection to the wider world is we are affiliated with the International New Thought Alliance, which is an umbrella organization organization that brings together groups and individuals who share certain common beliefs and attitudes, among them the idea that a new thought embodied in consciousness produces a new condition. And this was posed by Judge Thomas Troward. So, because of, of our, uh, you know, sort of being a little bit more on COVID alert, we're not going to uh, pass around the microphone today, uh, but, uh, and, or answering a question. Um, our presenter today will include that in her presentation. But we'd like to know, though, if we have anybody new who is joining us for the first time today. Raise your hand if that is the case. So I've never met Dan. Hi, I'm Ramona. And uh, so. <coughs> so. <laughs> um, so Dan, what is your last name? Brunei. Okay, so he is connected. Yeah, but some people have different last names, so I wasn't sure. So we have Dan Brunei in the house. <laughs> and then who just walked in in the back there with the white pants? Zoltan? Oh, hi, Zoltan. Yeah, I haven't met you or, or seen you even. So welcome, Zoltan. So those are the two sort of newish faces in the group. All right. So um, we're going to ask uh, Viboda if he would sing another song at this point. Would you please do that? Thank you. Yay, Viboda. Hey. 
when you see the light it shines all around you can you hear the music serenade from the stars wake up wake up wake up and look around you we're all here in space and the time is our own Feel the wind as it blows all around you. Can you feel the love floating in the air? Wake up, wake up, wake up and look around you. We're all here in space, and the time is our own. Mahalo, Buddha. <laughs> Thanks so much. That was very lovely. So um, we're going to ask Jean Love to come up and stand at the microphone and read from today's Science of Mind. Thank you, Jean. You're welcome. And yay, Stevie Miller. Yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> Another beautiful day. Here we are all blessing each other. And today is 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two in May. So that's kind of fun for all you 2-2s. Two, 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. And uh, we have a funny commercial of a guy dresses up as a 2-2 two, two to try to get us to take his taxi. And I'm not a 2-2, two, two, but I'm definitely of that vintage. I'm a great aunt, so that's good for me. So joy and mirth, laughter is carbonated holiness. That's by Anne Lamott. I tune out all dull negative ideas and tune in with the sunshine of life, with brightness and laughter, with the joyous presence that is life itself. Ernest Holmes from The Science of Mind. Wonderful book. I highly recommend it. I appreciate so much those who don't take life so darn seriously, as I tend to do sometimes. Yes, even me. Even if my nature is naturally more solemn, 
I love laughter, even if my nature, oops, there it is again, very solemn again. I love laughter. I love silliness. I enjoy the people in my life who easily find the humor and make me laugh uproariously. A sense of humor is paramount it to a lighthearted life. The people I appreciate most can laugh at themselves too, because we give ourselves lots to laugh about. Oh, I'm ad-libbing. Can't help it. <sighs> One of my favorite things in life is to enjoy deep belly laughs, the kind where my stomach starts hurting because I am laughing so hard. I remember those times happening more frequently as a kid and a teenager than as an adult now. These hilarious times are rarer than I would like them to be and happen spontaneously when everyone is feeling loose and free, when we let joy fill our hearts and bubble over. I often notice the universe's playfulness when my best laid plans take a detour. God definitely has a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> I truly believe feeling joy is our greatest mission in life. To have and to hold it close, no matter what outside circumstances arise, laughter is indeed holiness. There's our affirmation, and I'll read it once and then we'll break it in two. How grateful I am for freedom and joy. I am tickled by God's mischievous side. How grateful I am for freedom and joy. How grateful I am for freedom and joy. <laughs> I am tickled by God's mischievous side. I am tickled by God's mischievous side. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo nui. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so now we've come to the part of the service where um, we're going to be uh, touching on miracles and ordinaries. Um, this part of the service is quite well loved. Um, so uh, here we're asked to share with each other the spiritually meaningful events of this past week um, or this time of our lives or this portion of our journey. Miracles, because they're unexpected, they seem to come from a source both within and without, and they remind us of the great spiritual truths and they change us. The ordinaries, because they happen in the midst of our daily lives, they are the stuff of our daily lives. Their lessons are always right there to serve us. So um, I'm just going to ask, you know, if anybody has a miracle or ordinary. Oh, okay. Candy, would you like to come and stand here at the mic and then we can share it? Yeah. Oh, you don't want to? Okay, fine. That's all right. So, That is so beautiful. I wonder if I can just repeat it for the people on Zoom because they can't hear. Yeah, that's why you, you, yeah, that's why I was asking you to come here. Well, no, no, no. We love children's stories. Can, is this mic on? Okay, go ahead. This is uh, probably not so much a miracle as it is an ordinary 
closer huh? to the mic. the mic. Well, not exactly, but <laughs> so I get great joy out of the, some of the things that children say. And it's been a little while ago that uh, one of my dear friends crossed over on the Rainbow Bridge, and I had mentioned something to the children about that. It's been a little while, so I was surprised when they remembered. They were examining my nose ring, and they asked me if the nose ring would go with me when I go over the Rainbow Bridge. I thought that was very sweet. That is very sweet. Yeah. Of course. Of course it'll go over, right? <laughs> Anybody else with a miracle or ordinary who'd like to share with us? And you don't have to come up to the mic. It was just... Uh, <laughs> but thank you, Candy, for sharing that. Okay, <clears throat> Stephen, go, Stephen, go. I'm always good for something pretty ordinary. This one was fun. Let's see, you know, it's been raining a lot, so I've been mowing a lot. I get, I build up big piles of debris in the yard of pretty good sized sticks and weeds and everything and then i just mow them with a mulcher like instead of using a, a tripper or a shredder and it works pretty well anyways the other day i had just mowed a couple of these piles there's probably about five of them around and later i was walking through the grass and i looked down and i noticed a piece of paper a shredded piece of paper small piece of paper and it was like green and white huh? i better Check that out. I thought it might be a, a dollar or something, right? So I picked it up, and it was about that long. And it was a remains of a $50 bill. And uh, I thought, well, wow, where did that come from? What happened? You know, and it was also looked like it had been through a washing machine. Also, it was, anyways. So I was pretty motivated. Well, what if I could find the whole thing and take it to the bank? So I spent about 10 or 15 minutes, I guess, um, money-oriented. And um, I kept finding little pieces, and then I found a, a bigger piece. Anyways, eventually, I had about at least a dozen different pieces. And... Uh, End of the story. I took it to the bank and they gave me a $50 bill. Oh. So. Yeah, and we had a nice earthquake here last night and woke me up. Things fell off my shelves. The first one here I've ever experienced where it's that strong. It was, I have to admit, it was scary in Halualoa. Oh, yeah. Hi, Shana. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> um, yeah, that was an amazing earthquake. It, I have recently moved back to my daughter's um, after staying at a friend's place um, down near town. And, uh, yeah, this really big heavy thick bed shook i i was you know amazed and i know that i i felt kind of shocked and amazed but then i went right back to sleep and i didn't even remember today until people started talking about it <laughs> yeah okay well thank you everybody for all of your sharings. Um, I just want to do a, a quick sharing that um, I am visiting my grandchildren, you know, like once or twice a year. I've done that for my nine years now. And 
things have changed in terms of my accommodations. And so now um, I am renting a car, for instance. And um, I did go on Dolphin Podners and put a, um, an, uh, a request for a car rental, you know. And so several people contacted me and I went with this one woman and uh, it just kept getting sort of stranger and stranger, you know, and uh, come to find out she's not even on the island. And she was having like her housemate above her, not her housemate, but her neighbor above her in, in the building handle things. So I just got a little bit funny, like, okay, well, we're going to have a contract, but how are you going to sign it? So I just, I just said, well, um, let me get back to you on that. And then I went and I checked somebody else and it was like, perfect, quick, perfect. Somebody who was connected with people that I knew back in the eighties. You know, and so it was, you know, and Pasha was saying to me, well, you know, uh, maybe that wasn't really the right one, you know, and sure enough, that's true. So I guess, uh, would that be a miracle? Or would that be an ordinary? <laughs> Not a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was really challenged by how to, um, work with this person, you know, in a very diplomatic way when I, w I knew I was getting a little like shaken, you know, by the wonkiness and sort of like disturbed by the lack of upfrontness, you know, but anyway, yeah. So thank you to that person. <laughs> okay. So if we could have another song from the Buddha just before we introduce our presenter. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Valeria, now, eh, Kukumanuna, new la, ula, ole, oe, me, ah, Emma <laughs> Kania nai kala au kala o kale uwa le uwa like me na mu Aloha na na Aloha pa hea hea E ho o ki pa nano o Ina malingi ni like ole O kanivali no au Ika malu o kalao Oh, 
ngili no kaua Ohe awale ana ohe kuku manuna ni ula ula Aole oe me au e malu bale ana no E o mai koi noa, koi noa manu la ula Po i mai o unei So many of the songs in English we know about or know the titles to, so not so much the Hawaiian songs. Can you tell us the title of that one? Uh, Manu Ula Ula. <laughs> what does it translate to? Or can uh, you Red Bird. Red Bird. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. That's quite lovely. Thank you. Strong and... It was um, uh, brought out by the Sunday Manoa back in the yeah, 70s in the 70s, right? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much. Well, just before I introduce our presenter today, I want to thank uh, Patty Wall because uh, she is the person who makes the lays and uh, always shows up to greet and honor the presenter with the lays. Thank you so much, Patty. Thank you. So I'm going to keep the introduction brief because our presenter um, can fill in everything else. Uh, but this is Geneviève Brené. She's been studying the Gurdjieff movements for 13 years, attending retreats with three different teachers worldwide, mainly in India. She has an ongoing Gurdjieff movements group at her healing temple in Ocean View, uh, Kau where she lives with husband Dan and three cats. Hey, cats. <laughs> she is deeply involved in hula and Hawaiian culture. Genevieve is a craniosacral therapist, having uh, or practicing craniosacral therapy for 20 years, having graduated from the Piersman Craniosacral Therapy Academy in the Netherlands. She's also a licensed massage therapist here in Hawaii. She's a clinical health psychologist in practice almost 30 years. So welcome, Genevieve. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Ramona. Yes, you're welcome. Is the mic? Yes, the mic is on. Like this. OK, thanks. Yeah. Oh, that's too loud. When you introduce me, I hear like I have done a lot of things in life, different things. And but in my head, I somehow always patched it together. And that's also going into the presentation today with tuning into the topic. There came so much information and it took me until last week to get a title. Pasha knows about that. My title has been going back and forth. And um, yeah, until a few days ago to make a coherent whole of this topic because the brain is such a wide space and I cannot talk about it in 30 minutes, the whole, whole brain space, and I don't want to flood you with information. So I was feeling into what is my wish for today or my goal for today, and that is to see if I can transmit something to how we can listen from a more, from a connected space. Maybe you are already listening from a connected space, but listening and speaking from a connected space in the brain and connected with other parts in the body and see if I can give a little bit of a felt sense of different brain parts. And for that, I will explain a little bit anatomy, but not too much, otherwise we get lost in the brain and in the head. So the, the, my wish for today is see if I can transmit a little bit of a felt sense that you know, oh, this part is here or this part is here. And 
for me it is when I connect with the um, anatomy, when I know where what is, um, then I can connect in a deeper way. So to start with you, as I didn't couldn't ask the question in the in the introduction, I want to ask the question now that you can connect with a little reflection on yourself. And the question is, how do I connect with my brain or how do I use my brain? And see if you can go a little inside, like what is my connection with my brain? And then share it with the person next to you. Um, so see what comes up. What are the first things comes up when you ask yourself, what is my connection with my brain? And that can be anything. It can be from, I don't use my brain so much. I'm more a body person. Or I like to know what my brain all does. Or I'm a very intellectual person. Or I go in meditation all the time. What, whatever comes up in your system. And then share it with the person next to you. And we are just doing this very shortly, just like one minute, two minutes. For the people online, it's just a little intermezzo. But maybe for the people online, you can also ask yourself, what is my connection with my brain? And um, share it maybe with someone in your space, in the home, or share it with yourself, or share it with your brain. So to... We are coming back already. It's just a very short, very short sharing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I want to hear one or two people the what 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 came up. Wait. There's no end, I know. That's why I cut it. So maybe you can share it out loud. I want to hear one or two people just to have a feel of where you are at. <laughs> what is my connection with my brain? And try to share it shortly because okay, I have so lots that I want to share. <laughs> so t t today I feel I, uh, so I have my brain underneath my skull and it's kind of like a globe kind of thing. And then within the globe, there's a smaller maybe globe structure. And because I'm doing a three-day fasting, I'm much more aware of my um, what's going on in my head. And um, I feel a little pressure there. You know, so something's happening right above my soft palate. And um, that's what, how I feel today about my brain. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> but so a lot much. Of times, a lot of times I'm in my head and not in my body. So that's, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I will come back to some of the things you said in the presentation. So I've heard what you said. Thank you. So, so love, so, Sultan. Sultan. Thank you. Oh, Sultan. I, I'm Stephen. Um, what come up for me was like going way back in the '60s, going to college, like and taking psychology classes. And at the time, everybody was teaching the brain as the cause of your awareness or your mind. And now more and more people holistically are getting that it's the mind that's created the brain. Like the brain is actually an effect of the mind and not vice versa. And I think that's very new thought and it's pretty darn metaphysical and I'm good with that. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay, I will go from there. And it's very interesting to hear what you're saying. And um, like what you just reflected, I got you going. Well, that was what happened when I 
uh, prepared, my brain was constantly generating insights, information, and I had to search, okay, where do I start and where do I end? Um, and I want, want to patch Gurdjieff and Craniosacral together because that was really my deep wish to look at from different sides and maybe a little bit of psychology. So I've studied the brain from different angles. So first from the Gurdjieff movement perspective, like they talk about the three brains actually, the head brain, the emotional brain, and the belly brain, the physical brain or the moving brain. And of course the physical brain is situated in our head. Um, and there are people, like there are different types of people. There are people who are more intellectually oriented and speak more from the intellectual part. And there are people who are more um, physically oriented and want to sense everything. I'm more a sensing person, so I really love to sense what is going on inside my body, inclusive, including now in my brain. So in, pre in preparing, I sensed all these different structures and that was so fascinating. So I wish for you all to be able to sense all these structures, but of course, that's, uh, uh, um, but then you need to know what all the structures are. And there are people who are more emotionally oriented, like they continu continuously feel everything. So the way I would like you to listen today, and that's the start where can we listen in a more connected way is to connect the three centers. That's where I want to start. And maybe you want to, uh, in addition to the first meditation, that we go a few minutes inside, closing our eyes, and um, see if we can feel again our feet on the ground, like what we did in the beginning, just feeling where we sit. And then after that, I'm going to come with information, but I would wish you to listen from this place. Like, can we sense First, our anchor, our breath. Connect with the movement of the breath in and out. And then first go to the first center, which is located in the belly. That is the moving center or the physical center. And that is connected with all the sensations in the body. So you can feel tensions or relaxations, or you can feel energy running. Um, like what was said before, we can sense in the head, uh, we can sense energy there, we can sense inner parts there. So all the sensations in the body are connected with this moving brain or belly brain. So connect a moment with your belly, the physical space that also helps to connect with the sensations. And then going from there, we connect with the heart. That's our emotional center, the whole chest area. And the chest area is connected. And if you want, you can place your hands there. Um, but that's connected with all the feelings in our system and all the emotions. And they say, when our heart is not involved, we won't learn anything. So we better like what we want to learn. Otherwise, we have a great difficulty in learning what we want to learn. So see if we can connect with this physical heart place where all our feelings and emotions are connected. And then going from there to the brain and the head, and see if we can see if there is energy, energy of thoughts, or if there's words, or if there's activity. And the higher part of this intellectual center is the energy of presence. So can we be present with what is happening in our system? And that's generated from this intellectual center, the energy of attention, the energy of presence. And for now, I go a little bit fast through this, um, but from this place, we can connect the head with the heart and the belly. So see if we can feel ourselves as a whole, as a more complete system, connecting with the different centers. 
And then from there, whenever you're ready, and you can practice this at home as long as you want, but from there we can open up the eyes and have our eyes resting on the horizontal plane. And see if we can place our attention in more the whole of ourselves, maybe a little bit behind ourselves, maybe a little bit more inside our brain and listen from this place. So that's the first wish for today. If we can listen and you can, I practice that a lot while hi hiking or while talking to people, see if my attention sometimes can shift from the front part of my brain where all our thoughts are, where the intellectual, ordinary, daily mind functions to more the back in our brain, like behind the third eye or behind in the center of our brain and listen from there. And I, when I do it, I can like sense it in my body that I'm, it is as if I'm stepping a step back inside myself and from there look out. So then the brain, what is it? And um, I heard different things saying, the head, the mind. Um, I heard the palate mentioning um, the brain is, is a whole structure inside our body. It is inside the head. There are membranes around our brain, which go all the way to our tailbone. So that's the craniosacral system where there's a membrane all around our brain going over our spine inside the vertebrae all the way down to our tailbone. And that's the whole central nervous system. I was intending it to draw, but I'm not a good drawer. So if you get a felt sense when I'm saying it like that, I will leave it without the drawing. Like imagine your brain inside your head and there's a membrane around it. And it goes through our neck, inside the neck vertebrae. And that goes all through our spine. And it connects at the lower end of our body in, at our tailbone. So that membrane is literally connected all the way down. So everything that happens in our brain has a connection down into our body. And that's very important to realize because when our brain is stressed or our brain is peaceful or in meditation, it affects the whole body. And everything in our body is ruled by our brain. Also, there are all these parts in the brain, all these lobes in the brain, which rule different parts of the body. Um, for example, I can show an example. If you feel or sense in the back of your head, there's like a soft hole where the skull goes into your neck. Can you sense that? Like there's a la little soft structure just below your skull in the on the top of your neck and that's very important there the brain stem is located there like that soft spot is a big hole in the occipital bone which is in the back and all the nerves from the brain go into the body there and the fight flight brain is located there so if we want to relax our nervous system like we, for example, I sometimes do that when I lay on bed, but also in my sessions, I can do that, of course, but for myself, a little self cranial, when I lay on the bed, you can put your fingers very softly there and that literally will relax your nervous system because there's a very instinctual brain back there. If there's something that startles us, we go either into flight mode or fight mode or freeze mode. And that's situated there in the back of your head. And that has a whole chain reaction down, like we, we um, get adrenaline, our digestion shuts a little bit down, we make up for this uh, state where we are in danger according to our brain. And it has a whole reaction up. Before it comes into our conscious mind, it has a whole chain reaction of different brain structures involved. 
And that's very interesting. There's a question like, does our brain notice things before the body notices it? Before it comes into consciousness or does our body notices it and then the brain goes? That's a very important uh, question in psychology. Like what comes first? Does the body go in stress? If you think of stress situations, does the body go in stress and then the brain shuts up, uh, shut, uh, shoots up this stress reaction? Or does the brain does something first and then your body reacts? And I believe in the chain in your brain, before it comes into consciousness, your brain already knows that something is happening. Like with animals, animals go away before a hurricane comes. They know something is happening, but they don't have a, a conscious thinking cerebrum like the humans. Anatomically, that's not in their system. So that's a little uh, brain anatomy related with the stress brain, but there are, of course, all other structures. And I, uh, um, the, what you said, Sultan, about the soft palate, there's a whole structure above our palate in our brain, where it also can work with cranio, like if you put your tongue against your palate, Maybe let's all do that a moment. Let's put the tongue against the roof of the mouth. So that's our palate. And just see what you sense. Above that palate, there's a brain structure where our pituitary gland is in, our pineal gland is in, and it is said to that are the they secrete hormones. And it is said if you connect with the roof of your mouth, you can activate your pineal gland. You can uh, rebalance also your pituitary gland. The the bones up there they go in a certain rhythm, the craniosacral rhythm. And in one of those bones, the pituitary gland is um, situated. So that's an anatomically thing. So the roof of our mouth is actually very important. So sometimes there are some meditations where you put your tongue against the roof of your mouth. And it helps your brain to recalibrate. Um, so if we want to connect with a deeper part in your brain, like for example the pineal gland, it lets literally light and dark in. It regulates the sleep, so it secretes melatonin, which regulates your sleep, but it's also the spiritual gland of our system. It's behind the third eye. So if you physically picture it, go from the third eye inside your brain and a little bit on the back. So a little bit past the center from the third eye, then you come on the pineal gland. And the word that came up, and it, that's not what it was called in the information, but the word that came up in me, it's like a light bearer in our brain because it also literally regulates light, the letting in of the light and dark and the regulating of our sleep. So if we want to look out from our brain in a different way, we can, for example, place our attention inside in the pineal gland and from there look out. And then we perceive the world in a different way. But that's a practice to sometimes play with how do I look into the world, how do I listen to the world, and how do I speak into the world? Do I feel my heart when I speak? Do I feel my belly when I speak or when I listen? Or am I trying to reach out with the frontal part of my brain and trying to understand everything with this plane, but then we get a total different knowledge? So a, a little exercise how we can uh, practice it, and I use that in the Gurdjieff movements at the start of a movement. Let's all stand up a moment. And that's when we start. We start in the, uh, if you're able, of course, to stand up. Uh, we start in the zero position. And the zero position is first we... We intentionally relax the body, so we might close our eyes for a moment and then see if we can relax the knees. 
and then the pelvis um, tilts a little where the tailbone goes down into the earth. We, so to say, drop down to the gravity of the earth and then we relax the shoulders. We relax our neck. And from this movement of dropping down into the earth, into the gravity of the earth, it is as if a thread goes through the innermost core of our spine and it lifts us up to the sky. It goes through the crown, it lifts us up through the sky. So we have two movements in our body, one that drops us down and one that lifts us up effortlessly. And when we are lifted up, our shoulder blades come like a little bit together at the back of our body. So we align to the sky, so to say. And then from there, we open up our eyes and with that, we rest on the horizontal plane with our eyes. And that's very important because the eyes are the direct entrance to our nervous system. The eye nerve literally goes into our brain. And we are used to our eyes always go all ways. We are maybe used to look a little bit down or look a little bit up or reach out, like a lot of times our attention draws out if we are in the outer world. So see if we can literally, physically, sensingly drop in with our eyes coming in instead of reaching out. But we're still looking out. So it's like it's 80% in and from there we look out, 20% out. And the eyes rest on the horizontal plane. So notice if your eyes want to go all ways and all directions, it's your eyes rest horizontally on the horizontal plane. And that's a very good way if, if we want we can sit again, but that's a very good way to easily, if we are aware of it, relax the brain in a second. Like, how often do we notice or do we sense if our eyes are um, tense? 90% of the time we don't notice it. But if we can bring some awareness in our eyes and see if they can rest on the horizon. Like if you're looking to the sunset, maybe you can have your eyes rest on the horizon. And also this 90% the eye in and 10% the eye out or 80%, 20% out. But the idea is, can we drop more in with the eyes physically and then look out? And the eye nerve literally goes into your brain. So it affects your brain immediately. Try it out when you're hiking. It's very interesting. Or when you're out there in the world and walking through town where our attention will be drawn outside. Yeah. So another um, exercise for that could be, if you want, like we have, and that's also from the craniosacral point of view, um, you have six eye muscles. I don't know if you know that, but there are six tiny eye muscles which keep your eyes in place. And one goes up to the roof of the eye socket, one down, and then two diagonal, to the outer and to the inner. And they're very tiny. Um, and oftentimes they are out of balance. So if people are used to look a lot up, then the upper ones are more tense because you're constantly pulling your eyes up. And when I did the training, for example, that, that was 20 years ago, it was... Um, People could improve their eyesight with two points. They, some students tried that by practicing every day with the eye muscles. You can improve your eyesight because you want to rebalance those muscles and then your eyes can relax. So an exercise for that is to do eye stretchings. For example, you look up, you look down, you look to the right. 
and to the left. And you do this sequence three times. Up, down, right, left. And then you change the sequence. So for example, then you do right, left, up, down. You do that also three times. And then you change it again. Then you start with left, down, up, right. You do that for a few, and then the important part comes after it, after the stretchings. You can do that, for example, before meditation, if you meditate. I sometimes do that before meditate. And after that, you rest your eyes. So the important part comes after where you have done those stretchings. It's like doing stretchings for the body. And after that, you lay in Shavasana for integration. So you do those stretchings and you rest your eyes on the horizontal plane or you close them a moment and just sense. Sense where you feel tension, sense where you feel relaxation. And then you go on with your daily life. Because the way and the presentation is about brain health, like how do we keep our brain healthy? These are all kinds of ways to relax and rebalance the brain. And we also want to keep the brain plasticity active. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of brain plasticity, what that is, um, but it is the ability for nerve cells to change with new experiences. So if something goes wrong in one part of the brain, the other part, can take over. And the way we can keep our brain plasticity active is to try out new things. This is maybe a new thing to see if we can change patterns, change habits. Also laughter is very good for your brain. So I got very happy, my brain got very happy what you shared about laughter. Um, laughter is very good for your brain. Learning a new language making music, making art, everything that forms new connections where we want a little challenge to our brain. So we want to challenge our brain and sometimes break a habit and do something new. Otherwise it goes literally and physically and anatomically in the same groove again and again. It, it will go in the same groove and our brain plasticity goes down. Our brain is not able to react in a fresh way. So do something out of the ordinary, like the ordinary and miracles, but you can also orchestrate it yourself. Take another route than the one you know. Travel to an unknown place, but in the, in the here and now, change a habit. Incorporate a new practice. So for that, the last 10 minutes, I want to do one of the movements with all of you. And it's just a little exercise to challenge all of our brains to do something new. Um, and I was feeling into, do I want to do a movement sitting or uh, standing? Um, if we do it standing in the back, uh, we need to move things. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, then we go to the back and do their movement standing in a circle. No, that's not one of the movements. <laughs> we can either do sitting or standing. So a little experience of one of the Gurdjieff movements. And maybe we want to take one Lauhala mat, or is it it's best to do it I want to say it's best to do it on bare feet, but the concrete is also cold. Okay, I can, I can. 
Well, I will need my, we will all need our arm. We can say we are right, we are back in a second. Okay. <laughs> however we want. So the invitation for this movement is called Dance of the Nymphe. And we won't get the whole movement in this 10 minutes. It is legs and arms. But for now, I will do arms and legs apart. And the invitation for this movement is divided attention, where we bring our attention in what we are doing, in the form, but also in sensing our body. Because what is said is divided attention is one of the higher functions of the mind where we bring ourselves into what we do. And this is also something, something we can practice in daily life. Like while dishwashing, sense it in your hands. Sense the connection with your breath. Sense yourself or feel the emotions. We divide our attention on what we are doing and at the same time on ourselves. So that's the invitation, not about getting the form right or whatsoever. And of course, we try to get the form. But if we make a mistake, and if we make many mistakes, we just observe what it does to our system. There's no punishment for doing something wrong. Although our minds will think a lot about that. <laughs> OK, so while waiting, I will start the music. But we place ourselves in the zero position, what we did before. We relax our knees, we relax our shoulders, and we relax our eyes on the horizontal plane. And I will start the music and we will start with our eyes. orchestrating it. <laughs> okay, listen to the music. It's the loudest possible and correct. And we will start with the right arm in the past and one.
sensations in the head oh in the head <laughs> like there's this part on the top of your head which connects the left and the right brain and sometimes you can feel energy moving there it's like vertically on the top of your head but maybe there are sensations in your heart or feelings maybe there's tension somewhere in your body Or are there any sensations in the belly? And how's the breath going? Am I still breathing or is my breath tense? And from there we let go and we can shake it out with you one. And if we would have time, we go on with this movement and then we put arms and uh, feet together and it reconnects the brain in a different way. Like if we can all put all the elements together, we practice this divided attention, what I'm talking about. Does anybody want to give a word for what they were sensing to round this up or what they experience? Calm. Anybody else? <laughs> Stretch more. <laughs> you notice that you need to do. Okay. It's like Tai Chi with music. Yeah, some people compare it with Tai Chi and it has different elements more than that. But yes, it's, it's a reconnecting left and right in a different way. Okay, thank you. And we will sit down, see if there are any questions. But thank you for surrendering to this little, tiny little impression of Thank you, Steve, for holding the mic. Well, yeah. So, oh, I just want to see a few minutes if there are any questions or remarks, and then I will turn the uh, speak over to Ramona again to do the last part of this service. Yes, Sarah. Good question. Um, it's actually, it's not, the workshop is not about the movements. So for the movements, if you want to have an impression of that, I would say come to Ocean View. We have a beautiful group there, but I restart in November. Um, I'm gone for the summer. So if you want to be notified for that, put your name on my email list. But this afternoon will be craniosacral uh, session, also with a focus on a guided session through the brain um, but it will it will be like just a little taste because of course i cannot teach craniosacral in half an hour session but just a little taste taste of the touch how to touch um, but you also have to uh, have a partner so either in the workshop so also for that i need a minimum amount of people so if you want to go to the workshop sign up and then i call if if there's not enough people Thank you. Other questions or remarks about the, uh, I hope I didn't flood you with technical terms in the brain part, but. Or 
Um, Can you please repeat? Yeah, so I'm a role for and a lot of it. What we're doing feels like, to me, it feels like a little bit like Rolf movement, mindful movement. And um, so I'm wondering if, if Gorgiev movement has anything to do with um, with that mindful movement or even maybe Feldenkrais movement. How is that uh, came about? And what were these people contemporary? So I, I, I never heard anything about it before. So I'm just wondering if there's any connection with other type of movements. Yes, thank you. Um, it's not contemporary. He's from the, his, he was born in 1866 till 1949. So he, he was very in a few centuries ago. And he took a lot of what I know. He took a lot of, he's one of the seekers of the truth and took a lot of teachings from all kinds of directions. And he was inspired by um, um, Steiner, I think, or maybe Feldenkrais or Alexander. Um, um, I don't know about Rolfing, but he took from, for example, the Dervish uh, teachings. He took Tibetan teachings, Enneagram teachings. He was the one who brought the Enneagram model to the West. He has 350 movements, which are all choreographed on a certain piece of music. So there is a piece of music for every movement. Um, composed by, he composed together with the Hartmann, a Russian composer, and he himself is half Armenian, half Russian. Um, so the connection with Rolfing, I don't know, but he took different teachings and has the most, for me, genius movements who are really out of the ordinary. So they break by itself already every habit in our body. Does that answer your question? Okay. And I just want to share that <clears throat> I started uh, studying Qigong about two, almost three years ago. Um, and so some of the things that you were talking about today regarding the brain and the soft palate uh, are um, in the Qigong lessons or, you know, sessions that I take. And, um, but our teacher doesn't explain it, you know, like you did. So I really appreciated the connection, you know, the understanding of, um, yeah, the neurological, cranial, sacral um, data, you know, basically that we have, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I noticed that in the preparation, I'm so fascinated by this whole inner world. That's also my work. But to really know, I, I, my brain really wants to know, and then I can sense it more from a deeper way. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge where anything is situated, mm -hmm. it helps me to go with my physical, in the physical place with my attention. And then it lights up and opens up. And then it has messages. And then you can, I can talk with that part and see what it wants to say. So it's, it's really this huge. Gurdjieff has a piece um, of text about a lot of scientists have studied the brain and they never get to encompass the whole vast knowledge and power of it. It's such a powerful organ, and we can connect beyond if we use it well. There, it, it is said like maybe I don't know how many percent we is not used. We can we can connect with any collective consciousness if we use it well. So it's a really interesting place to go into in a deeper way. Anything else? Okay, I turn it over to Ramona. Well, Thank you. One really quick question, um, because I have uh, was a Montessori teacher for about 25 years and working with children and, you know, in psychology as well. And so I'm wondering if this uh, can be set up in a way that is helpful to children or is it that the children's bodies are still forming and maybe it's not the time to apply it? it, it it's an interesting question. When I was writing my thesis for the craniosacral work, I thought about making a story for children about the anatomy of the human body, because I thought, how can we encompass and remember all this anatomy? And what came up in me, I write a story from within, where I go through all those parts of the body and the brain and 
make it a children's story. So there are some books I know I, I ended up making craniosacral meditations, so which are for are more mindfulness meditations, but then for example about the sphenoid, about the mouth, about the ears, about the eyes, where I guide you through all the bones and all the I didn't make one about the brain yet, but there are books for children there which okay. explain the anatomy in a very easy way. Okay. And I might I have a lot of stories actually yeah. about from within, from the body parts, which are suitable for children okay i one time i will put them together in a book yes. that's my wish yes. <laughs> <laughs> i have okay. them all sitting in my computer <laughs> put them on a flash drive too <laughs> i have okay. yes. they don't get lost no. i've like i think like 20 stories from the 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 nerves the heart the brain the the conversation between the sacrum and the heart and the vertebrae and all kinds of interesting stories. Once one is about the, uh, the stress brain, where they go discover all the ventricles in the brain, and they're very cute in a way. Uh, I will look forward to that. <laughs> they're still all in Dutch. I have to translate. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> I wrote them twelve years ago in Dutch. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much, Genevieve. This is really wonderful. Uh, I think that for me, having a, a presenter present and speak and having the music is, is absolutely wonderful. And then having actual movement or hands-on participation, because I'm a, a hands-on learner. So I really, I really love that. You guys love that? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. So um, if we could... Let's see, have some just mellow offertory music and we'll pass the bowl around or should we put the bowl here and people come up, Pasha? Put it here? Yeah. Okay, so now it's a time for offerings and we just want to say beforehand, thank you in advance <laughs> um, for helping to support this center in all the ways that you do. And uh, today, if you could just uh, make your way up here and just put your offering in, that would be great. Thank you. Come on now. Oh, come on.
Mahalo. That was lovely. What's the name of that one? Uikavau. Uikavau. What does that mean? My thoughts lie on the forest. Oh, <laughs> so that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we're in Hawaii. It's it's really important to know some of the language and know the music. There's so much that comes through the music. You study hula? Yeah. That's what I, I, Good way to keep your brain healthy. Absolutely. I tried it. Everything else, too. Jeez. <laughs> the knees and the thighs. <laughs> so... Uh, we are, it's time for announcements. And um, first thing is that um, we often uh, take our speakers to lunch. And so Genevieve uh, picked going to the farmer's market over near the Monago Hotel. So when we're all pow here, we can just all go over there and, you know, have lunch together um, at, the, at the farmer's market. And... Um, Let's see. So basically, um, coming up at New Thought Center of Hawaii, of course, is the, are the Sunday services all at 10 a.m. And you can be here in person or you can live stream. Um, there's a video on YouTube afterwards that you can check out. So if you happen to miss it, uh, you can go and, and do the replay. If you're here, we have free child care during main service. For the next three Sundays, um, May 29th, Drew Womack, he's going to present the program and uh, music. Um, the title of his uh, presentation is Perception and Separation. Then on June the 5th, Maria Christina Owl is going to be speaking on frequency healing for the chakra system. Music by Kaimana Lighthawk. On June the 12th, Allison Yana will speak about Honey in the Heart. And music is by Mahina Saunders. And uh, monthly events. Last Saturday of the month, um, the uh, expressive dance event uh, that was being led by um, Adriana Atento has been canceled. Uh, because she is being uh, sensitive to the COVID surge and wants to, people to, to be safe. The last Sunday of the month, uh, which will be May 29th, next week, uh, produce giveaway after service. So if you have anything from home that you can bring, uh, we have a table out there uh, in the entryway. And then uh, people can, you know, you can share it with people. Um, the first Sunday of the month, which will be June 5th, will be the Crystal Bowls Meditation. And just a reminder, we have changed the time. So uh, you will need to be coming at 8.30 in the morning. And it will go until 9. And then this will allow time for the um, service people to set up for the 10 o'clock service. Special events, pardon me. <clears throat> so on Sunday, June the 5th, um, right after Maria Christina Owl uh, does her presentation, she will have a workshop. And um, she calls it Frequency Clinic, Heart Chakra Tuning and Calibration. More details to come. Sunday, June the 12th, Celebration of Life, Carol Hannum, from 2 to 4 p.m., Sharing Memories, Dessert, and Poo Poo Potluck. So you'll get more information about that, right, in the newsletter. Okay. All right, and there are uh, a lot of volunteer uh, opportunities that are available, and we're reaching out into our community here, and if you know anybody who would love to do this, we would love to know. Sunday service volunteers, greeters, setup, and cleanup. 
Um, we need a person to uh, tweak and maintain the Facebook page for New Thought Center Hawaii. And that's a paid position. <laughs> Workshop facilitators help with logistics of the event and there's free admission to um, workshops for them. And then uh, we had our 50th anniversary last year. We are still celebrating it. And uh, there've been a couple of little fundraisers um, in a local farmer's market. And then here after uh, one of our services last week. And so we need more, uh, people you know, to get together and do more planning for this um, 50th Jubilee activity. There is an online auction that is still in the works. So if you have like really nice sort of high end donations, please let us know and we'll, we'll start to, not yet. Okay, so Pasha says, not yet, we're not collecting until we set a date and we have a committee, but it's in the works. <laughs> and consciousness, right, <laughs> which will lead to manifestation. <laughs> um, to volunteer, speak to a board member, or click reply to the New Thought Center Hawaii newsletter um, to send a message to spirit of at newthoughtcenterofhawaii.com. Mailing list. To receive the weekly newsletter, please sign the guest book or sign up via the website, www.newthoughtcenterofhawaii.com. All right, so Ramona, for the, yes. can I say one more time for the workshop? Oh yes. Yeah, because I, it's really important if you want to come to the workshop to sign up before you leave. Um, if there are not enough people, then I will postpone it to another moment, but then I will notify you. So there should be, I would say, at least at least four. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> and um, preferably more, of course, but at least four. Otherwise, I, I don't come back here and then I will postpone it and notify you when it's happening. I sometimes have given workshops, the same workshop in Ocean View, just a whole day, a taste of craniosacral at my healing temple. Yeah. So the workshop is from 1.45 till 4 this afternoon, so after lunch. And the costs are sliding scale 35 till 50. So for the people online, you can call me. Um, the number is on the newsletter, but it's 808-747-3148. Or call Pasha or not? No, no just call to me to register for people online if someone wants to come and do that preferably like before one, then I know how many people are coming and people here can sign up before they leave if anybody wants to come. Can you repeat that telephone number again, please? 808-747-3148. Mm -hmm. You can also just text me, say, say I'm coming to the workshop. Sliding scale, 35 till 50. So minimum is 35. And people can pay with Venmo? Yeah, and Venmo, out. cash, uh, or check, check to the new thought center. Okay. It will be, yeah, it will be, you get a little taste of craniosacral touch uh, about the rhythms, the brain, um, whatever can be done. Two small guided sessions where you work on each other. Each session, like half an hour, 40 minutes. Okay. Okay, great. thank you. So uh, we're going to close now with um, the Hawaii Aloha song. And it uh, looks like we're going to be accompanied by guitar. By from the board. No, no hand. Yeah. But if you'd like to stand and form a circle, that would be really beautiful. Hawaii, 